morning and welcome to St. John's of Lettingtown. So glad to have you join us here on this Sunday, June the 28th. Happy to say too that uh, next Sunday, July the 5th, we will uh, have our first uh, in-person uh, worship opportunity for, for those of you that uh, look forward to coming into a absolutely perfectly socially distanced and prepared uh, sanitized and ready to go uh, St. John's in Lettingtown. You, you'll have that opportunity, you have two opportunities next Sunday at 8 o'clock and at 9.30. Just a reminder for the 8 o'clock service, we'll be here in St. John's uh, beautiful church uh, indoors. And then uh, at 9.30, weather permitting, of course, uh, we will gather out at the Memorial Garden. Uh, both of those are morning prayer services and should last uh, right at about a half an hour. So pleased to have worked um, with our ushers and our uh, welcome, uh, wel uh, well, definitely welcome theme of the day, actually, but the wellness committee uh, in preparing for you. So uh, I think you're, you're going to have a good, good opportunity. For those of you that that's not possible, and I uh, duly appreciate that may be you know, um, a good, goodly number of folks for, for whatever reasons. Rest assured that Chris Brain and I uh, are going to continue uh, to uh, broadcast or film our uh, online uh, worship experience for you and have that posted and so you can enjoy wherever you are and, and uh, to be safe. There is no rush whatsoever in this. We we're pleased to offer that and, and actually it's, it's been a, a real pleasure for us. <laughs> for Chris and I and Brother Stephen previously to, to learn and navigate this system we're in. Uh, but we're happy to do that for you. The only other announcement I have is I, I direct your attention um, to our epistle, uh, last Wednesday's epistle. And again, this Wednesday, we will offer a uh, book study and discussion on uh, race relations in America following uh, the title of the book, uh, Waking Up White by Debbie Irving. Extremely helpful, and we we will have a Zoom discussion uh, teaming up with several churches, um, and that will begin on Wednesday, July the eighth at seven thirty. Plenty of details, though, further on uh, at our website and on the epistle for you. So let us begin on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost uh, morning prayer right to. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 13. Let us say together in unison. How long, O Lord, will you forgive, forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed over him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. 
my heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 22, beginning at the first verse. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. And the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown them, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, beginning at the 40th verse. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of the little ones in the name of a disciple 
Truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the conscious spot, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For in you have lived in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you made us glad with a weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And here we invite your prayers, either silently or aloud. Especially today, gracious God, let us join with Anglicans around the world as we pray for all the people in the Diocese of Europe and their bishop, the Right Reverend Dr. Robert Hines. We pray also for our Christian sisters and brothers who are members of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Rockville Center. On Long Island, we give thanks for the ministry of Trinity Episcopal Church in Northport. Here at St. John's, we celebrate the ministry of our wardens Vicki Fox and Jay Aston. We continue to remember all those who are working on the front line of the COVID virus throughout our country today. We pray continually for the peaceful protesters in our country who seek justice, equality, and healing for all African Americans. Let us now lift to God those for whom we especially offer for prayers and healing. Today, Francis Brain, Becky Browning, 
Barbara Crafton, Sandy Halbert, David Knott, Nancy Polk, Barbara Smith, Richard, Jackie Wasp, and others you may name now silently or aloud. We pray for those who have died. And today especially we remember Canon Robert Fardella and others. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God now rest in peace. Amen. Let us continue with the general thanksgiving as we pray together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. to communicate. We try. We, we, our whole emphasis is to communicate 
to those who are entering that they are welcomed. So the word welcome is associated with uh, a special guest, right? It, it, it's logical that you're welcoming uh, a guest, not a regular member of the household, who may be a family member uh, you wouldn't necessarily welcome, who's just come in, say, from um, a long afternoon in the garden. Uh, that probably wouldn't be me anyway, but uh, you wouldn't uh, welcome them because they live there. So just to get this straight, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes any one of us welcomes Jesus. God. There are numerous examples, I can't even begin to list them, numerous examples throughout the Bible of what we like to call a radical welcome. Not in political terms, but radical meaning it just is, is transforming, unexpected, uh, you know, unconditional. And the bottom line and the emphasis in all of them, it seems to me, as I've looked through the years and read, seems to me that the emphasis is, is on inclusion. Doing for others as we would have them do or treat us, right? Pretty simple. <laughs> well, at least that's, that's the message, is simple. Jesus said, and the early disciples put a high value on welcoming and proclaiming the presence of God. You, you see that today and this read. But let us pause for a moment, wherever you may be this morning, settling in um, before or after breakfast, or you're traveling, wherever you might be. This is a moment to pause. And let us think about what we have seen take place, right, in our country over the last several weeks. All of those things that are, uh, that are good, Frankly, there have been some, some remarkable stories of welcome and inclusion. I, two weeks ago, I alluded to some of that in, in my sermon here. Those things that are not so good, clearly, are uh, before us. Welcoming others who may have been uh, affected, as we ponder this, welcoming others who may have been affected by the COVID virus, those uh, great stories of, of care, heartfelt, uh, you know, love and appreciation for, and then the other one, especially the others, would be African Americans, right, who have angrily taken to the streets to tell the rest of the country that they have not felt welcomed. They've not felt welcomed into neighborhoods, in banks, in schools, in churches, in jobs, in stores, in police departments. And the list is exhausting, and it just as you hear that. And it needs to end. Now, isn't that exactly what Jesus is telling his people and you and me this morning in this message? I believe it is. Stop the divisions, he's saying. Stop the exclusion. End of those cultural practices, either known or unknown, which keep people separated, enslaved, if you will, to history or otherwise. Hospitality and welcome is central for every Christian that has ever lived. Hospitality has been and will be a theme that you have seen in, in readings, as I've alluded to, I've preached on, and frankly, not only in the Episcopal Church, but those that use the Revised Lectionary around the world. The timing is remarkable, isn't it? The message that we're getting from our lectionary to our real world needs. The primary ethic underneath this is that there is and remains cultures, diversity, and people around the world that are quite different and complex, granted, at times. Look, don't look no farther than the Middle East, Jesus' own people, and thinking of the complexities, right, of welcoming neighbor, even today. But the, the ethic and the understanding of the Gospels is clear 
and in the culture of their time and ours that there is joy in welcoming. It's okay. It's beyond okay. It is what we are required to do. There is a belief in this that there is a, a desire of God that transcends Christianity even to, to Judaism, to uh, the Islamic faith. Christians of three great Abrahamic faiths all agree hospitality is central. And then so an understanding of hospitality comes an obligation to welcome, doesn't it? And that dates back even farther, way farther than the life of Jesus. Where and how do we experience such welcome today is what I've Where do, where do we experience welcome today? And where is our witness, frankly, to welcoming others? Meaning, what can I do, you do, this church, this community, what can, can we do? Well, to understand a little bit of this, it's, it was helpful to me to, to reflect of the week that's coming up is, is quite interesting for a lot of reasons, but tomorrow... Uh, Monday, the church will remember the feast days of uh, St. Peter and St. Paul. And on Tuesday, I will give you a little bit further insight into that, that, that here were these two very complex individuals. And then towards the end of the week next week, there will be on Saturday, um, sorry to tell Chris, a celebration of the 244th anniversary of America's independence from that fine nation called Great Britain. Most of us will celebrate that, let's see. Anyway, at the end of the week. So it's important to note, though, that there are a number of reasons for, as you enter in the, into the back into the Bible story now, into, into Peter and Paul, to think about Peter and Paul and what that means for us that we can learn and, and how we can be witnessing to uh, a, a, a more inclusive welcome, is my point. They did not agree on much of anything. We know that. They didn't get along. And there are a lot of reasons for that. I'm not going to you know, take your time to explain, but you, you'll know Peter and Paul were quite different. And finally, they went their separate ways uh, in the proclamation of the same gospel that you and I believe in today. But what they did have in common was this conviction that God had visited humanity in this person of Jesus. And that wasn't just a whim. God sent Jesus to teach us, to show us remarkable and new ways of how to live, how to relate to creation, all of creation, to other human beings, and to witness to God's love. That's why Jesus came. We know that. So both of these men understood that, and they understood that the welcome of God was an invitation to a place in God's kingdom. And as we celebrate then the 4th of July and take off our mask for a moment to sing God Bless America, maybe to eat a, a big old hot dog with, you know, maybe a lot of chili and, you know, good stuff on it. Seriously, let us ask ourselves, seriously, right, let us ask ourselves, what did Jesus mean in telling us over and over and over, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me? What do you mean by that? Americans have always held a variety of opinions on any number of subjects. That's just who we are. But for us as Christian Americans, the question of the day that, that sort of grows out of this text asks, what does it mean to welcome, especially in this toxic political environment today that we find ourselves? And what can you and I do about that? Right? To make our world reflect and to live into what this man came to show us how to be and to respond. 
My quick answer is register to vote and mark your ballot. And I mean that whatever, wherever your political persuasion is. Uh, that's where you start to make things better, is to register to vote. We are Christians first, however, aren't we? Citizens of God's kingdom. Thank goodness, we're citizens of God's kingdom. Living out our faith, though, in an American context that indeed has had privilege and challenges, right? Of course. Jesus didn't say that we have to agree on everything, but he pretty clearly told us in this passage, passage we see today that we need to welcome, be welcoming of others. We need to welcome God. All Christians should agree on that, right? Our welcome, our extended hospitality is inviting God into that relationship with the other. As the author of the epistle to the Hebrews reminds us, I could not say it better myself. The Hebrews writer says, when we welcome strangers, we may very well be entertaining angels unaware. Almighty God, you have given us the grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.